Well, it, uh, this season of the seed project uh, really starts about 10 years ago. Yeah, it was, it was six, no, it had been four, four months after I, I stepped into the lead role that I had first conversation with Mayor Nolan Grouse yeah. at the time. We're out for breakfast and just, yeah, engaging him. And he said, so what are you, you know, what are you doing with all the land? You know, that's, that's around you, you know, this, this new development. And I was like, there's a new development? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. And uh, that, that, was, that was the impetus to, it's like, ooh, I'm just start having, seeking Jesus, start having some conversations, so. Jer had just taken over as, or become senior pastor at the church. And he took us through a, a spiritual audit. Uh, between 2012 and 2013. And it just really challenged us. Each of our elders had different experiences, but it was a step that God had called us to, that there's going to be a new way of dealing with people or treating people and to go as far as we can go to, to reconcile with people. And so I think that was a, a real turning point for us as a board of elders. And I think it, it set the tone for what Jesus had in store for us as we started to consider a building program. Yeah, John 12, 24 says, you know, unless a seed falls in the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, yeah, it produces many seeds, an abundant harvest. So it's part of the, of the heart that, again, there'd be a death to self, an alignment around Jesus as, as first, but that as we do, do that, knowing that he can take uh, the death of a seed and, and to see it multiply. The, the building redevelopment really started in about 2014, and there was certainly an air of excitement within the congregation. But it really came in, the, the seed project really came into uh, focus for us. Uh, it was probably in 2018 when kind of the architect's plans were ready to go and we were now ready to uh, do the seed project. And we were part of the team that was um, going out to visit people. And, and uh, we were daunted, frankly, by the amount of money involved and, uh, and just the um, the size of the project. It just was really something outside of what we'd ever been involved in before. I think it, you know, for the leadership, we knew how we were going to operate, and that was good. Um, the, this building project was bigger than any of us could imagine, and how was that going to happen? for a few days. Uh, how many of you are here for this uh, thing here? So yeah, quite a number of you. The rest of you, wow, missed out. Uh, too bad. Um, uh, so it was really good to be with you, Jeremy. I clearly remember leaving soul care and the excitement of soul care and thinking about how we were going to manage parking. And next thing, there was a pandemic and that all went wayward. All of the planning and strategy and preparation that we had for what was going to be a building project went out the window. Well, good morning, church family. Thanks so much for tuning in on this, which is the, the first of new and uncharted territory for all of us. It's hard to overstate how much the world has changed since we met just a week ago. Who, who could have imagined? In the midst of building, no one expected COVID to hit when it did. and. Um, sent us for a loop as far as how do we make sure that students are seen through a screen, <laughs> right? You know, how do you, how do you engage well through a chat room? Hey everybody, welcome to Merge. This is very different than what we had last week, am I right guys? Um, we did not it was challenging to say the least. Um, challenging to throw all your plans out the window and have to start from scratch and um, you know, as I think back to my time in Bible college, nobody told me, hey, this is what you do in ministry if you don't have a building or if you don't have a place to meet. It's in those moments that you realize that 
we are in uncertain times. It was a challenge to continue to build optimism, to continue to hold on to hope in a season where it seemed like it was a delay after a delay for any number of reasons. You know, there's a verse in Psalms, it says, unless the Lord builds the house, its workers labor in vain. And, um, you know, in this instance, with no disrespect to anyone involved from the trades to the leadership team, it just seems sometimes that anything that could go wrong went wrong. You know, it, it began with uh, extra time for the permit approval process and then on to uh, the sad passing of the architect, um, a global pandemic, surprise. Um, there was a water main burst. So recently we discovered a, an issue with a freestanding wall that wasn't tied in. That's an extra, you know, six figure remedy right there. So it was just a pattern of reoccurring surprises, delays, expenses. Holding on to that hope, holding on to that sense of like, you know, God sees these things. None of this catches him off guard. And yet we get stressed, we get worried, we get frustrated by the process. And yet he sees the end from the beginning and sees a way through it. What we've learned, I think we've learned time and again, is that his timing is perfect. His timing is always right. And he has no anxious anxiousness in him. and. So he invites us to walk with him in that, to trust that he actually knows the best. <laughs> the team here, every staff member, every team member that I ever talked to just knew that God was going to bring it together. Jesus led us to our architect. Jesus led us to our contractor. And those were really powerful times. And not only did we see, we see the resources we needed for this specific project, but through every year, essentially every year of the seed project, we also saw an increase in giving to our general fund. So to have both those things happening at the same time is just a real witness to God's incredible faithfulness. Even though we've had setbacks and we've had disappointments, it's been a journey. and. I think if it had been smooth sailing and we hadn't, everything was on time and we would not have grown like we have. And I, I believe the body is much stronger um, because we've learned to go to him and persevere and wait on him. And it's been in the waiting um, that all that growth has taken place and the equipping that I think he's going to use in these, these days and weeks ahead that will be, um, an, an incredible burst of, of whatever he wants to pour in. But probably the, the, the biggest challenge is, is ultimately has been about keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, to keep looking at him, uh, to not be distracted by that, which is, is not going the way we uh, thought it would, to not be distracted by that, which is maybe feel like it's going wrong, to not confuse what's happening in the lower story. Um, you know, with what we, we can see and, and touch and hear with to confuse that with the upper story of what God is doing in all of us, why he's doing it, uh, how we are to ultimately submit to him and, and to follow his lead. God's orchestration of the entire staff and having the right people in the right place at the right time and also not only having the right people with their skills, but them further developing those skills. Um, again, it's another testimony of all what God can do. To be a church that's in the midst of a um, family community um, just really provides opportunities to say, okay, how far do our walls move out now? Because I actually think they can move out really far. I think we can have even more of a voice than we've had previously. Like one of the things that encourages me about our church is that we've been well respected in our community for years. And I think we can further build upon that. Jesus is, is a master strategist and uh, his wisdom and foresight on what, on what we needed uh, and when we needed it, I mean, his brilliance is just unmatched. And what appeared to us many times to be unnecessary delays, uh, at various points really were just shown to be uh, his, his provision for us. Uh, 
resulting probably most significantly in terms of uh, seeing his faithfulness and timing. The beginning of the construction of this project starting just three weeks before uh, the pandemic landed here in Alberta and concluding uh, three weeks uh, just before the major health restrictions were lifted here in Alberta last, last summer. I mean, only he could set, set that up. But we certainly were not trying to do that. <laughs> we will absolutely never regret the steps of vulnerable obedience that we're willing to take with Jesus. So he's given us this beautiful building as a greenhouse. He's given us this beautiful building to be a place where growth is nurtured, where maturity happens, where relationships are developed and built. He's given us this beautiful building so that in so many creative ways we can help introduce people to him through what we, we do in this building and with this building. Jesus said that, that uh, they would know we are his apprentices, his disciples by the way we love each other. And I hope and trust, and I'm already grateful for the ways in which this uh, space is, is providing um, a venue for, for that to flourish. Um, so recognizing that if this building gets used for anything other than that which is motivated by love, uh, it just won't have uh, much of anything to offer by way of lasting value. So it may be temporary value, but anything motivated and done out of love will have lasting eternal value. And I look forward to seeing how that unfolds in the days to come. <laughs>